Hello and uh, welcome back to Dickin' Around Outdoors. Today we're going to do something a little different. I've been asked by a few people how we're packing for our trip that's upcoming. And if you recall, we're going to be gone for about a month. We're taking the Jeep. We're going to be primarily camping. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you how we're packing a Jeep and what we're taking. So the first thing, before we actually get started packing the Jeep, is I wanted to show you these Rhino straps. And we bought these last year before our trip. And if you've ever tried to pack anything tall in the back of your Jeep and then reach down and hook your straps to the factory hooks, it's dang near impossible to find them. So what we did is we just took some of the Rhino straps, we hooked those to the straps or the uh, attachment points, the anchor points in the Jeep, and we just connect our tie-down straps to these now and it's dramatically easier. So I would recommend investing in a pack of these things and just make sure you get ones that are strong and made to actually hold something because we want to make sure everything packed into the Jeep is strapped down in case of an accident. The second thing we've got is over here on the side, we've strapped our two Tenkara fly rods. We've just used the Velcro strap and hooked those to the roll bar. And then we've attached our first aid kit right here because we want that very easy to get to if something would happen. So it's easy to get to, it's not gonna be covered. We can grab that. So that's the back of the Jeep. Oh, camera lady's pointing out the ubiquitous fire extinguisher. Some parks require you to have a fire extinguisher with them, so we've purchased this. And this is the siphon hose for our AEV fuel caddy, which you saw, hopefully, a couple weeks ago on my video where we installed this onto the Jeep before our trip. Now, one thing I like about this, it's Velcro. When we have our GMRS radio in here, we actually power it through the back. We use one of these straps to just strap the radio in. And then we have an extension cord because all the controls on our GMRS are mic'd or on the mic. So we just have an extension cord for the mic. We plug that in. And the only thing that has to go up into the front is the mic, the antenna, the magnetic. It attaches right here on our tire carrier and then just goes up in to the back and plugs into the radio. So there's no drilling, there's no attachment, and in that way, as in everything we do, because we do use multiple vehicles, we, we are able to move that from one truck to the other. So what you'll find is our loadouts are different than some folks that have permanent overland vehicles that they can put in refrigerators and they can put in drawer systems. We jump back and forth between the Jeep and the Raptor, and we really don't want to just buy everything twice so everything we have can come in and go out. So let me show you what I've done up front and then we'll show you the actual packing. Next up is our Blue Ridge Overland headrest pouches that uh, I did the video on a while back. And in this we just have one kit that's fire starters, sort of everything I need to start a fire, some fire starters, um, a Zippo lighter, and some kindling and in this one we just have our bug nets for our heads because the area we're going to may have some pretty heavy mosquito load uh, and flashlight just some lighting gear on top we have our JKU attic from Blue Ridge Overland and all we've got in there is all the coats that we're gonna need we're gonna go temperatures down into freezing and up into the 80s on this trip. So it's gonna be a wide variety, so we're layering. So we have rain jackets, vests, and outer coats up in the attic. When we pack, we try to break things up into categories. And the first category is vehicle items. And by that, I mean if we get stuck, if we have a mechanical issue, if we have a tire problem, what do we need to take care of the vehicle? The first thing we're carrying is a set of Max Tracks, and we bought the bag for these as well because, as I mentioned, everything we have needs to go between vehicles. So we didn't have a permanent mounting space. So we have a set of Max Tracks with us. The other items we have inside the Jeep uh, for the vehicle essentials or whatever you want to call it is a tool roll. And in our tool roll, we just have basic hand tools. We have 
screwdrivers, picks, wrenches, pliers, an air gauge, just simple stuff, tape. The kind of things that you would need to make minor repairs if something happens. We don't have major equipment to weld a broken part or anything like that. Um, but if we have a minor problem, we want to be able to get on our way and not have to worry about it. We also have a tire compressor. And inside this compressor is also a deflator kit and a tire repair kit. So if we have any problems, we're able to repair a flat on the road and not have to try to seek out help unless we just have a catastrophic failure. We're also carrying our recovery gear and inside the bag is standard gear. We've got our shackles, we've got a recovery rope, we've got um, our winch controller, set of gloves, just basic recovery gear. And then the last thing is a jump starter. If we have any battery issues on the road, we want to be able to take care of that without seeking out another vehicle and jumper cables. So we just have a fully charged jumper pack. What we use to carry our clothes are North Face Base Camp duffels. We really, really like these duffels. They're durable as all get out. They're spacious. They're classic design. They're also very, very water resistant. So if they need to sit outside the Jeep in the rain, there's no worries about your clothes getting wet or anything like that. So again, North Face Base Camp duffels have always worked great for us. Our next category is the ever important food and water. For water storage this time, we're taking a five gallon scepter can. These things are very handy. They pack nicely, they're durable. So we really like these. And then for food, we are taking, in this case, all of the food that we're taking. There's 20 plus meals in here right now. Uh, there is our, all of our coffee for the trip. There's some granola, canned goods. So again, primarily on this trip, we're taking dehydrated and canned food. We are not going to be remote for 30 days and away from everything. So we are gonna be able to be going through towns and stopping at stores and getting fresh ingredients as we want those. So we will be doing that as well. But this is the primary food source. And as you can see, a lot of meals pack pretty darn easily. So now that we know we have food to cook, we have to have something to cook it in. So this is our kitchen box here. And this is everything we need to cook and clean up for our trip. Uh, we have heat gloves. We have a spare collapsible water tank. This is a platypus water tank. We have the wrench for our scepter can to make sure we can get everything tight so it doesn't spill and transport. We've also got our one stove that we're taking, which is the Firebox G2 collapsible stove. And we like this because we can burn wood as well as butane or propane. We've got our cooking pot, two fry pans, all of our cooking utensils. Every one of our bags also has a Lucy light so that we have lights when we unpack these things. We've got our Diddy kit, I guess, our, all of our little items. Spare water filter. So this is pretty much everything we need. We've also got a butane burner. And I did want to show you, we do carry a Platypus Gravity Works water filter. Our intention on this trip is that we are going to be filtering a lot of our own water. So we are taking this filter to do that. This is the four liter version. And that's why we're also carrying spare filters. So that's what our kitchen consists of. The last hard case that we carry with us is what I'll call our odds and ends case. And this is items that we need to take, but they don't necessarily fit in the other categories or they might be too big to fit in the other boxes. The first one we've got is our cribbage board. We do expect to encounter a fair bit of rain on this trip. So if we are trapped somewhere, we can keep ourselves entertained. We've got a spare shelf for our camp table. We have our portable fire pit, and that's also has a cooking grate in there that we can cook on. A portable solar charger for our phones and things like that. We're carrying some extra fuel as well as one bottle of propane. In the event it gets cold enough that the butane struggles a bit, we, we had taken propane with us. We've got a spray lubricant, a couple extra bottles of bug spray, a bottle that we use to heat water to wash dishes. The most important item, when you need it, you need it. We never know when we're gonna need it, so we have that. 
some laundry detergent because we will be stopping along the way and doing some laundry, spare meds, bear spray. We want to make sure we have that for any hiking that we do. We've got our Lucy light in here. We're also carrying some shower pouches and wag bags. And we do have a couple life straws with us in the event that they're needed. Hopefully that's not an event that shows up. And then the last thing, since we are definitely adherents to leave no trace, we do have a dry bag to throw trash in so that we can carry it out and dispose of it in a proper manner. So the last bit that we have is one dry bag that has our sleeping bags and sleeping mat in. We put that in a dry bag just in case it has to come out and there's any rain. We want to make sure those things don't get wet. We have two camp chairs with us, a small folding camp table, a bag to carry all of our electronic gear. Since we'll be making videos in this trip, we're going to take all of our YouTube recording gear. The Blue Eddy, so we want to make sure we have portable power to recharge everything and to run the old man's uh, CPAP machine at night. And we like to carry that in the back and just plug it in right here and then we can keep it charged up while we're driving. We have our fishing gear, so this is all of our tackle and gear for our Tenkara rods. And the last thing that I would highly recommend for anyone driving on this Western Canada, Alaska route would be a copy of this publication. It's called The Mile Post. And this has been in publication for a long, long time. In fact, I used this on my 2003 trip into the area. So what this is, it is actually a trip planner for these roads. It's a mile by mile log of all the highways. So you pick which highway you want and it will tell you mile by mile what's located, what you'll find, where you'll find gas, where you'll find lodging, where you can fish, some history of the area. It's just a phenomenal resource. And if you buy the print version, you actually get a digital downloadable version. Our last item that I want to show you in this video is our axe bag, cutting tool bag. Now this is a bit of a luxury, I will admit, but it's nice to have along. You've got a little sling for any wood that you collect for your fires. I've got a K-bar if I need to baton anything. A shovel, it's got sort of a collapsible shovel. This uh, is handy if you want to uh, dig a cat hole, something like that. Sharpener. And then we have our Bob Dustrude collapsible buck saw in case we need to process wood and then we do carry an ax with us as well. So depending on how much wood you're going to work with and that, this is really handy to have. Like I said, it's a bit of a luxury. I think you could just pack the buck saw and uh, the sling and the shovel, but if you've got the bag, you might as well use it. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how we pack. Uh, this trip is gonna be 30 days. So I think we've got uh, a pretty compact kit for that length of time. And I'm not saying that this is the way everybody should pack because clearly everybody has different needs and wants, but I think this is gonna work fine for us. We sleep in the Jeep, so you haven't heard me mention anything about a tent or anything of that sort. And just when I had everything highlighted, camera lady, said that she found one item that's absolutely essential for a month-long trip with me. She wants to show that to you. So here we are, the one camera lady approved, absolutely essential item for a month-long road trip with dicking around. So as always, we hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. And as always, take care and we'll see you outdoors, possibly with a shot glass.